yourself uh talk a little bit about just kind of who you are what uh you know southern nutrition then we'll go deep into how you started in the medical field you started your first one when it's five star grew from there and then we can keep going and going and going yeah all right so uh right now we're at uh, eight stores so between florida georgia alabama we've got two here in mobile one in auburn one in dothan two in columbus georgia one in Winter Garden, Florida, and one in Claremont, Florida. Both the Florida stores are outside Orlando. And then we just signed a lease for uh, a city named Pooler, which is outside of Savannah. Heck yeah, up a little bit. Up a little bit. There you go. Right. Okay. Perfect. So you have all those stores. What, um, talk about what got you into the supplement industry, opening up a small business. Because, I mean, before you were, you know, selling medical supplies. Yep. You, were do, you, were medical, you were doing something in reps in the medical field. Yeah, so kind of right. talk about, like, because I remember when you first started, you were still doing that. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. So um, went to uh, college in Chico State, Northern California. I'm, I'm a California guy. Born again <laughs> Southerner. Born again <laughs> Southerner. Just to let everybody know. Um, came out here in 2015. At the time, I was doing uh, medical device sales for a company which was Covidian at the time. Then became Medtronic. So it's the biggest medical device company in the world. So a lot of uh, general surgery, laparoscopic surgery, uh, bariatric surgery type devices, disposable devices. So I was calling on hospitals, worked mostly with bariatric and thoracic surgeons, though. Um, after about 10 years of doing that in the San Francisco Bay Area, man, I was just like, oh, what am I doing? My sciatica was activating. I was sitting in the car for two, two and a half hours a day just to go like 20 or 30 miles. Feel your pain? Yeah. So, um, you know, at that point, I uh, gave one of my buddies from uh, – College, uh, call his name is Charlie Hartwig. Shout, shout out five star guys, but I was like, "Hey Chuck, man, I'm I'm tired of working for the man. What do I got to do? You <laughs> seem like you're doing well. You're out in Texas killing it with, uh, I think it was NutriShop at the time, then became Total Nutrition." I said, "Hey, I want to you know work for myself. I'm tired of being in the grind. What do I got to do?" And he's like, "Hey man, I'll show you the ropes. I got a guy who can help you kind of get started. Um, as a matter of fact, there's this market called Mobile." Alabama <laughs> and uh, you know the market's kind of available so if you want to go out there and I was like mobile like the gas station like what are we, what are we talking about <laughs> so um, obviously it's mobile but uh, came here that summer checked it out 2015 you know, it was summer 2015 with my business partner at the time and we're like okay you know this is like 20 years backwards from you know what, you're what, used to. what we're used to out California, in California yeah. and you know Silicon Valley and everything and so um, we're like I kind of dig it though it's a slower pace what, what do we got to do so Ended up signing two leases right away. Just kind of jumped head first into this thing. And uh, at the time, uh, the Total Nutrition were going through a, a revamp, and they had changed their name to Five Star Nutrition. So I said, hey, guys, what do, what do I call this thing? Am I going to call it Paul's Nutrition? I don't know what, what I'm doing here. Like, I need something kind of marketable, something kind of snazzy. Can I bite off your name? They're like, all right, for the time being, you can use the Five Star name. Yeah. And so uh, we opened with the two stores here in Mobile. So one here in the Costco Shopping Center and the other one in West Mobile. But they were both Five Star Nutrition's at the time. And uh, come around 2018, um, I kind of figured I wanted to do something for myself, wanted to change the name just so I could grow. You know, Five Star, uh, I don't want to say it was governed, but there's three main guys and they were, you know, had their own LLC and everything. And I yeah. said, well, if I'm going to grow and I'm truly going to be an entrepreneur, you do your own thing, yeah, right? I got to create my own brand, right? So I went so far as uh, to do a trademark. And then I talked to some of my other guys who were close with me at the time. They, they thought it was a good idea. So we came up with a logo and everything. Um, and at that time, while I still had the two stores here in Mobile, um, I was still doing the medical device sales and it was just, it was too much. You know, I was starting a family at the time too. Um, the two stores here commuting all over the state of Alabama. And, and I was like, is that when uh, your son moved back here too? Cause I remember yeah. he moved back when we started high school. Yeah. So I know that, that was a probably big deal too. Like spend time with him and not working. No, that's yeah. And that's a great point. And so he came out here in 2016, uh, from California. And so I was single dad. I was moving in with my girlfriend at the time and trying to do medical device sales and two stores. And I was like, man, I'm, I moved out here for a purpose. It was to truly be an entrepreneur. What am I going to do to make this happen? Forget it. I'm going to separate myself from medical device and just go all in retail nutrition stores. So um, 2018, the first technical Southern Nutrition was Southern Nutrition Auburn. So um, moved a couple guys up there at the time, um, gave that store a whirl and just kind of 
I don't want to say steamrolled from there, but just kept looking at markets and promoting yeah. guys to um, new ownership positions, and here we are. Well, one thing I was going to say, I think you're talking about your guys. Every time you come into a store, um, it's always the same guys, or they always come back, or like you said, they move up into management. Right. Or, but you have some guys who have partnered with you for certain stores too, too right? So, like, I yep. think you really treat your, your, your workers well because, I mean, they're always coming back. They might go somewhere else for a little while, but they know they're always welcome home. And, like, there's always opportunity to grow, 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 grow throughout the business. No, yeah, absolutely. And, um, y- you know, everyone, when you come into this setting, most of the guys kind of have, um, you, know, you know, they live the lifestyle or they want to be a part of a cool team environment. Or, you know, they're already supplement takers. Some are bros. Some are just all about nutrition. Um, but as they continue to work for me, you know, whether they aspire to be a small business owner or whether they aspire to do something different, whether it's be a real estate agent, an accountant, go be a firefighter, a cop. I mean, half my employees are probably serving for the city of Mobile in yeah, sure. some form or another. Um, but I always give them that opportunity and I don't try and hold on to them if they don't want to stay here. So my big thing is I'm going to develop you to the best that I can. And we'll work with kind of what you want for your own family, life, future goals. And if that means staying with me, great. Let's look at a couple opportunities. Let's go look at some markets. Let's look at manager position, potentially an ownership position. Otherwise, man, I'll give you the best reference uh, that I can. And hopefully you take everything you learned through this process and you can apply it to whatever future job you want to do. Yeah, just curious. So with all the other stores, are you, you're an owner of all of them. And then you have, you know, guys that have stepped up and become partners to some level, but I mean, no, none are like you haven't franchised out to where they're the owner of that store and just under your brand name, right? And so um, I have four stores that are just one hundred percent mine, and then there are four that I have business partners on. Nice. And so, kind of my philosophy right now is, um, you know, I don't want to say it as an incentive for other people to just open stores under me, but we don't do the franchise thing. We yeah. try and keep it in house. We like the family feel. We like giving everyone who's earned the opportunity, the opportunity to provide for the family or, you know, yeah. be a small business owner, so to speak. Um, but the way I look at it is, Hey, if you enjoy what you're doing, um, you want to keep taking that next step and you're kind of a risk taker, you know, you have to have some sort of yeah. risk tolerance to, to do this. Um, and you're willing to move. That's a big thing, right? Yeah. Whether you're start here in mobile or you're starting Columbus, Georgia, you know, we already got stores there. So if you do want to take it to the next level, I mean, I moved all the way from California, not knowing anybody, to start here, but um, that is a thing that we're very open with with our employees. Say, hey, you know, this is the career path. Yeah, you're starting at the bottom. You might be, you know, doing demo tables at gyms right now. Then you'll work up to an associate role, mm-hmm. talking customers, selling to customers, and then potentially assistant manager, and then run your own store. And if you like it, realize like retail doesn't sleep. Like this isn't for everybody. Nah. So even if you like being in the store and you know you're good at selling, you're like, oh man, I get a great commission check or whatever. I like yeah. talking to people every day. Well, if you take that next step and you want to be a business owner, like you're not only financially liable, but like there's plumbing that could go wrong, HR uh, employee stuff that could go wrong, product issues, inventory supplies. I mean, there's a whole ton of stuff that's behind the scenes that not everyone really understands. They just kind of understand the like, oh, wow, this is cool. You get to Uh hang out and talk shop with everybody all day. Again, that's kind of what everyone sees on the outside. Oh, There's yeah. a whole back end. Yeah, the, higher, the higher you go, the less time you're actually interacting with customers, the more you're dealing with the backroom stuff and, and staffing and, and all that stuff. And people don't, don't quite realize what it takes. No, absolutely. And, um, you know, myself, I probably spend oof, 10 to 20 hours maybe in the store a week, if that, but most of it's supporting yeah. all my guys, right? Whether it's putting out fires or mm-hmm. I got to go to a different market to train our new guys. Or uh, just keeping up vendor relations, um, product something, development. Something happens where some, something hits the fan. You have to drive up to Auburn and run uh, the oh, store. Yeah. The kids, everyone's sick and like. Oh yeah, especially gotta, yeah. The last two years, I'm sure there was plenty. Oh, of like, there's been a lot oh, of fire drills. Yeah. I thought I was going to be home today and off. Nope, I'm on the yeah, road. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Sorry. So, um, you know, as as a single dad, that's been kind of tough too. Um, but just always setting expectations and communicating with the guys that yeah. want to be future business owners. Like, hey. It may seem cool. I get to kind of pop in from time to time, but just know, like, I work seven days a week. Retail yeah. is seven days yeah. a week, guys. Yeah. So if you're not willing to do that or at least have it in the back of your brain, because it will affect your family, right? Yeah. If you want to be married, be a parent, like, your spouse is going to have to deal with that too. Um, so it's not for everybody, nah. but it is rewarding. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have to answer to anybody else. It's just me. Yeah, but that's also awesome too. Like, you know, having, you know, I, I did uh, retail, I mean, not retail, restaurant sides for a long time before I right. um, got into the beer sale stuff. 
And that was one man, the, the VP that I still to this day consider my mentor. That's what he always said was like, don't look at the sign for what it says. That's somebody else's. If that sign said Bacon's, you know, would you be willing to get up, you know, an hour earlier? Would you stay mm-hmm. an hour later? Would you answer emails till two in the morning or whatever? You know, whatever it takes, you do it, right? I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, on those long days, look at it that way. Right. And it always helped. It always yeah. helped. Like, right. know, and that, I just think it's awesome that you're trying to grow from within – you know, and, and when those when you see those guys that or ladies that have that, you, you're seeing that they're getting it. Like, hey, you interested in doing more? Yeah, exactly. And you know, and you brought up a good point. One of the things that I always talk about is treat this as your own. Yeah. You know, so that's a big uh, characteristic, or I'll call it advice that I give to everybody. And you know, some people do it, some people don't. You know, and um, I kind of go into observation mode a little bit when I first hire someone. I don't want to give them kind of all the, the the keys to the vault yet, oh, but yeah. as they become more and more serious. Uh, but that's one of the things I look for is like, you know, do you treat the store as your own? Do you treat the products and do you treat the customers more yeah. importantly yes. as your own? Do you treat your fellow employees as part of your family and with respect and everything like that and put other people's interests first yeah. uh, above yourself? Because it really is, man, when it comes to retail, there's always something. Yeah, happening. and you can walk in places and feel a vibe, you know, because if, if you've got, you know, some, some employer manager in a store that's just a dick to work for or work with or whatever. Right. Like you walk in there as a, as a customer, you can tell. Yeah. You know, and then you walk into other places. I mean, Publix is a great example for me. I think, you know, everybody that's going to hear this has probably got a Publix somewhere near them. You walk in those stores, people talk to you. They look at <laughs> you in the eye. Like, it's it, it's just borderline, like, overwhelming where they're like, do you need anything? Can I help you? Can I carry this out yeah. to your car? I got a loaf of bread. No. <laughs> please please stay and help the, the, yeah. the, the seven-year-old lady yeah. in the line behind me. Yeah. Do not help me but carry anything. But it was a good anything. gesture. I'll remember it. Yeah, thank you. I know what you're, you know, I know you're trying to help, but I'm good. But, it, but you know, that... Their prices are a little bit higher generally than some other places. But I'll go there more often because right. I feel good when I walk in no. there. Versus you go into, you know, in not a mom, I love shopping mom and pop places, but, you know, another chain, just you don't feel as good for going in and spending your money. Like, man, there's 10 other options where I could spend my money. Man, I don't feel good make, going to Walmart and spending my money anymore. Make me feel good for coming in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, Sometimes for, saving isn't worth it. Yeah. No, and I think that's one thing, too, that um, I want you to talk about is, how you treat your customers compared to some other places, not just in town, but like some of the bigger chains when it comes to the supplement industry or health and wellness industry. Cause um, I mean, literally there's people in here right now and they're talk your uh, workers are talking to them. Hey, what can we find? Let's get on the computer. Let's see if you've been here before. Right. And it's not like, and it's, I mean, yes, you want them to buy stuff and you want them to buy like your brand of stuff as well. But like, if they don't want to buy Gauntlet, you're like, hey, that's fine. Like, try this. This is just as good. This might be a little bit better. Like, you're not afraid to, like, sell other people's brands right. to make your customers happy because you know they're going to come back. They're going to tell people. And at the same time, if they don't find something, hey, take – we have half this bottles already used. Just take this, try it right, out, and exactly. come back. If you like it again, we'll get you hooked up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves on. And I don't know if you'd call it uh, a consultative sales process, but um, I really encourage my guys. First of all, I hire a lot on character, right? But are you a good listener, right? You got uh, soccer mom Sally coming in here. She, she didn't want the strongest pre-workout <laughs> coming in. She may not want to get big. She's not doing deadlifts or whatever. So you yeah. kind of got to go, um, if I want to call it more of a chameleon-like approach to every customer that comes in, but you really got to listen and I think part of that starts in the hiring process and with the character of the people that I surround myself, guys and girls, like, hey, if you want to be part of this team, like, be a good listener first. Yeah. I can teach you what's on the back of all these panels. It's not about hiring, you know, Jimmy Swole, yeah. who's like, oh, man, I take such and such. Or I, I know, you know the back of all these pan- panels. It's all about are you relatable? Yeah. You know, can you empathize with some of these people coming in? Because um, as you experience in other industries, and, I mean, you guys hear it, like, we become psychologists to a certain extent. Like you'll start hearing stuff about the family. Like, well, I'm trying to lose weight because I had such and such kids and I've been out of the workforce. And it's like, whoa. And I mean, some of these guys are younger. And so I, it helps me being an older figure, especially a father coming in and helping to explain to them, you know, life. Um, Some of our customers are not all coming in here in the 18 to 24 year old age bracket. Like you might see at some of the gym. So teaching the guys to be flexible, um, but it does start with listening. It starts with good character, and then uh, I can train the rest. For sure. Yeah, and then a lot of times, what, what are those people asking? It's not the words that come out of their mouth. You know, like the, the most commonly asked question at Disney behind where's Mickey and where's the bathroom, what time's the 3 o'clock parade? Yeah. Whereas most, you know, 17, 18, 19-year-old employees would be like uh, 2.59 and 60 seconds. 
Right. That's what I would have said at that age, some smart aleck answer. But, no, they're asking, well, we know it starts at 3, but that's a way over on Main Street. What time does it get here? Right. And more importantly, what time do I need to get here early so my, what time do I gotta be sitting so my little my kids, kids my can family. see yeah, yeah, all yeah. the stuff that comes by? That's what they're asking when they say what time is the 3 o'clock parade. And, yeah. and it, it has to translate over to what you guys, you know, they're coming in looking for something that helps. It's not, you know, what's the best commission for them. It's like, no, no, what helps them? And, and then exactly. they're going to start coming back. You build that raving fan, and they're telling people about five-star nutrition. And, I mean, Southern Nutrition, sorry. Still in <laughs> Southern, <laughs> Southern Nutrition. Um, I, I was, I'm still used to that name. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, and they're telling people, and then word of mouth is like the best advertisement there is. Absolutely. You know, you, know, you, you can't really track. Even today, you can't fully track, you know, how many people are affected and come in because of certain ads or, you know, Instagram Live that we're doing. Um, you know, but that word of mouth is like the strongest in both ways, you know, yeah. both positive and negative. Because, you know, if somebody goes somewhere and they have a bad experience, you're going to tell anybody to listen. Yeah. No, especially this day and age. I mean, social media. Yeah. I mean, if you're closing the store two minutes earlier, you know, one of the things that I always tell my guys too is, um, you know, a confused customer is a potentially a lost customer. Like people are going to come in and again, they don't want you to read every ingredient on the back of the panel. They want to be listened to. They want your expert advice, right? They came yeah. in here, make the recommendation that is best for them. Right. But don't, don't overcomplicate it. We don't need to overcomplicate things. Right. And so um, just keeping it relatable with them, um, not going too deep in the weeds and losing the mm -hmm. customer. Cause you lose them. They're going to be like, Okay, are you trying to sell me something? <laughs> I came in here and you just went on like a five minute yeah. tangent on, on. No, of course it helps to be knowledgeable if they ask those in depth questions, which oh, you yeah. will get. But you know what is that ten percent of the time? Yeah. You know, so yeah, you get somebody like Jake that's taking a bunch of stuff. And it's like, all right, look, this isn't working. I'm looking for something like this, and then you can go, yep, you want this one or this one? And, you know, yep. Yeah. Well, here you go. What's the biggest thing uh, once you start? Once you got in, like two years deep. It's okay. Two, it's, 20, 2018, 2018 2017, you're two years deep in the supplement industry in the retail uh, sector. What's the biggest thing you learned from those first two years compared to what you thought and what everyone else was doing, the dirty tricks, oh. all the good stuff? Like, oh, you asked me the open Pandora's box. Good question. Like, like huh? open, <laughs> open Pandora's box and just, like, be real because, I mean, honestly, when, when people come in here – no one ever I, – I doubt anyone ever leaves angry or mad or upset or unfulfilled. Everyone in, is always happy. So it's are always happy. So it's not like that. Every, especially in, like, the, the, the two, three big ones, like, in the nation. You know, it's, right, right. Um, so there's a couple ways to skin a cat on this one. I'll say first, um, you know, this industry, before I knew it, it's uh, – again, you see retail. You see these big box retailers – when you get behind the curtain, this is almost mafia-like. All right, there's a few big producers of certain things. We'll just call it protein. I think there's three big protein manufacturers. Of just about everything? Just No, that's just a protein. Oh, but okay. When, but that make the protein. Yeah, yeah that make, all, that, that make the, the protein. Whatever labels you see on the outside, they're all really exactly. coming from like three guys. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> so, all right, so you can go down that rabbit hole, right? Some of the manufacturers own their own brands, right? Like ON is owned by, I think it's Glambia, but you have some of these manufacturers that own their own brands, right? Then they manufacture it for other brands. And for a long time, and, and I didn't know this, right? Um, these are supplements. A lot of this stuff is not FDA governed. Like you can have FDA approved or GMP approved facilities, yeah. but just because something says it has, we'll call it 20 grams of protein does not mean it has 20 grams of protein. Yep. So I had no idea how much fuckery was going on in label manipulation, it's ingredient crazy. manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so let's stop for there real quick. So, like, so how old are you again, Paul? Forty-one and so holding. You're so you're forty-one. So, the supplement injury was pretty huge when you were like in high school, college. Like that's when all the good shit was out. Jack 3D, oh, the yeah. Gacket, the, the result, Muscle oh, Tech, and, yep. all the yep. stuff that really maybe Jack was the only thing that actually worked. But like, just think about back then of. Everything you saw, you saw the ads of the guys and brother oh, all swollen. Yep. And it says there's this muscle this, mag, oh. this blend, this blend, and then now you're in the industry. Fifteen years later, and you're like, man, that was all bullshit. Like none, like none of that was really there. So there was a couple things that happened during that period of time, <laughs> right? You had not only label manipulation, you also had ingredient manipulation. And if you do your own Google, Wikipedia search, you can find these. Big name manufacturers, and there's, some of them are still around today. That's why I don't carry them because they already had a, a history of what was amino spiking in protein at the time. 
But, you know, we know Lee Priest didn't get huh. jacked, like, just on creatine and yeah, uh, off of muscle tech protein, muscle tech protein. Nitro tech. Yeah, I, I mean, so, uh, of course, there's that marketing aspect. But, again, there was some real manipulation going on behind the scenes. And that's where I think, unfairly put, this industry know, got a, uh, a, a reputation for it. You've heard, oh, snake oils or yep. this or, right? Um, there was. There was a lot of stuff not only sold that wasn't what it was supposed to be. But you had other retailers, I'm just going to throw you under the bus, GNC, who had a, you know, a commission-based structure that was based off of their own in-house brand and also a product of the month. Yeah. So I remember going in, and this is you know, before I started and right around the time, I'm like, okay, what, what are other stores doing? You know, how am I going to differentiate myself? And you know, I, I was lucky to have inherited a sales model from the five-star guys, but still doing my due diligence, I would go in there and you know, this month it was being, no matter what reason I came in, oh, you need this fish oil, you need this fish oil. Well, I'm trying to lose weight, fish oil, trying to gain weight, fish oil. Because <laughs> that's to, how they get paid. Yeah. yeah cause the, that, the, the, the hourly employee, that's yeah. his bonus for the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's just doing his job, right? But, um, you know, some of the bigger corporations, to whether it's to drive down cost or increase margin or whatever, there was a lot of that kind of stuff. So you have not only uh, some strong commission-based sales tactics, mixed with labels not being what they say they are and then the customer's not seeing the results that they need and then on top of it sometimes you, you go into these stores and these people don't live the life whether they're obese they don't work out um you know they're just not in there and they're not answering your questions and they're not techno uh, uh savvy when it comes to reading the supplement labels yeah. so you're just getting an awful experience and you feel ripped off yeah. You no. Know, so a lot of friends, and I'm sure you guys all have felt ripped off at some point going into fucking Jack's Nutrition, a GNC, or da da da, whatever it was yeah. at some point in time. And that was 120 bucks, right? Yeah, when I was yeah. 18, spending 120 you bucks. Good, like, you work, you you know, worked for two weeks at Domino's, saved up this Dude, money, delivering I'm go get, pizza. I'm yeah. Go get some pre workout, some post workout, and then like come to find out, you know, years later, like the shit was terrible. You should just. That's why it tasted so good. It's just fucking 16 grams of sugar and da 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 da. Like sugar Walmart and salt. creatine and yeah. stuff. Right. Coffee instead. Yeah. So, um, you know, and this will kind of be a, into a, a good segue into why we decided to create our, our own brand, but you know, we didn't want to have that reputation. And that's one of the reasons we're very picky about the brands that you see on the shelves behind us. So that was one of the things to answer your original question. Like, I had no idea the brands that I was carrying. Like maybe it was because they were in another store. Maybe I saw them on a magazine. You know, social media was just kind of getting taken off. Yeah, flashy looking label. Yeah, so, yeah. someone's yeah. coming in and asking for Jack 3D, and it had a you know a bunch of DMA and a ton of speed in it yeah. at the time. But it was like, hey, people keep asking <laughs> yeah. for this. I'm gonna bring it in, you know. Um, or people keep asking for Muscle Farm Pro. Man, it tastes really good. But it, you know working through and sifting through all of that and then having to deal again, there's only so many manufacturers and trying to sift through, Oh, well, he's really making that product. He's also making that product, man. I, okay. So there's two more proteins that I can't bring in because they're both amino spiked, you know? So you have to kind of go through your disqualification list or your qualification yeah, list yeah. on bringing stuff in and why? Cause man, I got a reputation and a business and a family. I don't want to be selling snake oils. I don't want to be selling dog shit to no, people. Yeah, Cause nowadays anybody can Google it, look mm -hmm. it up and see yeah. what's in stuff and what's real and what's not. Yeah. And, and, and they're going to relate that first back to you, not to the guy. Paul said that da, 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 yeah, right? Paul, exactly. at, Paul at Southern mm -hmm. nutrition mm -hmm. said, this is the good stuff. Yeah, fuck that guy. We're, fuck, we're yeah, not going there anymore. They don't even know who, fuck. who, you know, CEO guy that yeah. just puts whatever in there. To exactly. Fill the tub. Exactly. No. And that's so, crazy, man. so that's why I have to do my research and I ask yeah. for certificates of authenticity and, um, you know, percentages. Um, a big thing now is, um, you know, protein manufacturers are putting on their yield. So, say a protein says 25 grams of protein on it. Well, it actually might yield maybe 18 grams of isolate, six grams of whey concentrate. So that's, if I can speak frankly and tell the audience, that's one of the things that, you know, because protein is pretty much in everyone's diet for the most yeah. part. Everyone's kind of encouraged to take it. And, you know, when you're looking at that, you want to look at the yield of of protein. It's like when you go to McDonald's and you're getting that uh, quarter pounder, but when it comes out after being fried, what, what are you stuck with? Like, yeah, you know, maybe much. an eighth <laughs> pound or something like that. So, so just because some of these jugs out there may say 36 grams or 40 grams, what's the yield guys? Yeah. And your body can only absorb so much at one time anyway, right? Yeah. So, so you know, there's that crazy too. high amount. Yeah. It's so, really just passing through your system. And, and again, there's still a lot of marketing that uh, goes in, but just know if I can give this message to whoever's watching, like that's what I'm for. I'm, I'm doing the due diligence. That, that's why I get the bags under the eyes. I'm staying up late and I'm tasting all this stuff for you guys. So you guys don't have to do it and hopefully not go through the, the stomach ache or the heartache or the, well, 
Well, it's like so many, so many other industries, you know, you're going to, if you want good cuts of meat, you're going to talk to a butcher. You're not just going to go pick something out of the cold. Box. Right. Right. You know, I'm in the beer sales industry. So, you know, so people want to taste something good. A lot of times I'll get phone calls, even non sweetwater stuff. You know, they'll ask, man, what, what's a really good, you know, porter or lager or this and that. You're going to find somebody that knows more than you. Yeah. Makes sense. And then in the uh, supplement industry, like find somebody that you can go talk to. Yep. It's not, you know, you're not just reading it. Cause even, even online yeah. they can, I mean, if they're going to BS their label, they can sure as hell BS, you know, whatever they put online, too. Oh, you know? and that's a big thing. Like, find I mean, somebody that you can talk to that, that knows more, that does research. I mean, when I found Jake as a coach, you know, I knew a, I knew a decent amount, but I was starting to plateau. Start working with him. At 42 years old, my numbers are still going up. So, you know, find somebody that you can talk to. And then kind of maybe even unlearn some things that you yes. thought you knew for fact, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Yes, yes. I mean, that's how this, this uh, industry is, right? It's um, – you know, you, you think you're sitting on concrete information, then a new study comes out. So we're always trying to be abreast, to whether it's the new studies or, you know, the new ingredients and always having, well, hey, no, I did ch- tell you this, ma'am, last time you came in, this was the best ingredient. But what we found out was this, and that comes into the educational piece mm-hmm. and the trust piece, because if I can admit I was wrong because uh, some things change or an ingredient panel change yeah. or something, so be it. But at least I've earned the trust and Absolutely. then I can sleep at night. Yeah, no doubt. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll have a, our sponsor shout out Southern Nutrition with a quick video, and we will be right back. Awesome. Today, Turkish Stone's one of those products that's gained a lot of attention over social media the past few months. Just wanted to break down a couple things. It's derived from plants, very lean, does not affect testosterone levels. This product right here by Frontline Formulations has a thousand milligrams of Turkish Stone, 10%. That's the purest form of Turkish Stone that you can have. It also has some epicatogen which is a natural myostatin inhibitor, help take your gains to the next level. Turkestone is great for not only building lean mass, but staying cut. We got spring break coming up. Come to Southern Nutrition, get some Turkestone. Out. We're back. So we talked about the supplement industry, how uh, kind of shady and shitty and <laughs> schemey they are with all their – I can't – I'm bad with my R's. How do you say it, Paul? Proprietary Blend? Proprietary Blend. Yeah. Oh, so, we didn't even touch on so that. So let's talk about the okay. – hey, let, that's yep. good. Let's talk about that, okay. and then we can talk about – why you decide to formulate your own stuff and talk about how you go into picking your ingredients, okay. the correct dosages. Cause I mean, I'm pretty sure like your pre-workouts, you just need one scoop and everything's like the clinical dosage. But let's talk about those blends and how a lot of supplement companies like BSN and all these places with no, expo- <laughs> all the good stuff that we used to take when we were younger oh, man. probably had nothing in it, but fillers. Yeah. You know, um, just right off the top of my head, you know, if you're doing the math on the back of a, of a label, right? If the scoop size, let's just say it's 10 grams and you add up all the ingredients and it is exactly 10 grams or nine grams, guys, they're lying because there is coloring. There is um, other things to help it. So it doesn't stick. There's, you know, so it's not for those out there, you're going through your label and you say 10 grams, everything below it should not technically add to 10 grams. Because there you is, have the fillers that yes, have to do the coloring. Like yes, said, right? exactly. There's going to be more. So, you know, right there, whoever made that <laughs> label is like, Oh, I got to make it add up. Exactly. Nope. Um, another thing, proprietary blends, guys, I don't carry. We might have one left on the shelf. If I'm, if I'm looking hard, probably a pre-workout, probably something really nasty too. And that's why we still carry it. Cause <laughs> you know, some customers are questing. Like, I don't know. It's psychotic. I think psychotic is a pri- proprietary blend and there's something in psychotic. And I've asked these guys up and down, like, Hey, how many grams of this are in it? How many grams of that are in it? Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, it's proprietary. I'm like, well, no yeah, shit, it's, it's proprietary, it's but. This, it's called the psychotic blend. And there it is, the psychotic <laughs> blend for those out For there. anybody that's stumbled upon this proprietary blend is like, they're not letting you know what's in that. Exactly. So it'll have their, their list of in, ingredients, right? Say it's caffeine, uh, beta-alanine, citrulline, creatine, creatine, but it'll have stars yeah. next to each one of them. And the total serving size will be, call it 2,500 milligrams yeah. or five grams or. Like, you know, these things are in there, just not quite how much. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, if I'm trying to create some sort of, uh, whether it's a diet and I'm going into keto or I'm trying to create um, or avoid adrenal fatigue, like I want, and I think this is good advice for everybody out there, you want the maximum amount of results with the minimum amount of, we'll call it extras, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. why take a thousand milligrams of caffeine if 400 will do the job? No, for sure. That'd be like, you know, why would you take three scoops of this to get your, you know, six, mill- six grams of citrulline when that's now going to be like a thousand 
uh, milligrams of caffeine. You want something that has it correctly to go with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, too, you know, and for those that are serious, you know, you have your little notebook or whatever you're doing, and everyone will cycle on and off certain things. But, um, you know, I don't want to always be ingesting a 1,000 milligrams of caffeine or a bunch, maybe it's a bunch of made alanine and always have my skin crawl, whatever it is, right? Insert ingredient here. And so we live in a day and age where people want to figure out what's best for their body. And so they're always playing with ingredients. Some are making their own pre-workouts at home. You know, they're getting um, just the raw ingredients for certain things. And either they're blending it. And they're trying to figure out what's best for their body because every individual is different. Everybody metabolizes things different. Everybody has different uh, digestion problems or, or lack thereof. And so, you know, we want to encourage transparency as much as possible because, there is a sweet spot for everybody, especially when it comes to this stuff behind yeah. me on the shelf. For sure. So let's talk about uh, sure. your stuff now. Like how, you okay. know, when you decide to go and start your own company, your, I guess, a second company, and uh, talk about what you wanted to make different, how you right. wanted to do it, and kind of where it started and where it's at now with this company. Okay. And I'll just pull one of the pre-workouts off the shelf. This is Gauntlet, and I don't know if you guys can see on, on your camera, but very transparent list, very transparent. Um, so the foundation behind this, guys, is, you know, went back to the drawing board, as I was talking earlier about not knowing what's in um, different products, being able to kind of control the outcome or the customer experience. Well, it starts, it starts right here. It starts with, what am I recommending? Well, this day and age, you know, you get tired of, going in the, the circles, chasing certain manufacturing companies around. They're reformulating for whatever reason. Maybe they tell you the truth. Maybe it's not. This is one of those things where we could not only control the product, we could control the customer experience. Um, controlling the product being we could formulate our own stuff, right? Controlling the customer experience because I know exactly what's in it. And it, so if there's a potential side effect or they really like it, I'm like, okay, we did really good on this yeah. formula. I'm on to it. So, um, just some background on frontline formulations. Shout out to my business partners, uh, Eric Poston and Jake Oliver. So these are the guys that are behind the scenes too, that uh, they own stores with me. And what we did is, and everyone kind of has their own little specialty on what they're good at. Um, we have a test booster, we have a pump product, pre-workout, fat burner, et cetera. And so what we all do is we get, get together quarterly or monthly, or just kind of depends. Uh, but we want to get together and say, all right, guys, you know, what is it that we're seeing out there? Are there any trends right now? Um, one of our most recent products is turkesterone. It's a natural anabolic. Oh, you, you just, make that now. Yeah, so now we have our own turkesterone product. Because that's hard to find. So give a shout out to your website. So SouthernNutrition.com and FrontlineFormulations.com. Guys, if you need any creatine right now, that's a hard to come by. Same with turkesterone, but we got them both. <laughs> shout out. Um, so, you know, I go to my guys, and then really what we do from there is we say, hey, this is a formula that we, we – we think we like this has maybe been a successful formula in um, a, a different product or we saw it online or something. We said, well, you know, let's have our manufacturer make it for us. Let's get some samples. Let's do some blind tests. And so what I do is I get some sample tubs and we all filter it out to our employees. So I actually have to thank our employees for a big piece of this because they're guinea pigs. So, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have it, yeah. right. And, you know, I would rather, again, with this stuff, I would rather have the people that I trust give me honest feedback before it ends in the customer's hands. So I get together with Jake and Eric. We say, okay, let's look at this. We got 8,000 milligrams of citrulline. All right, well, I, you know, maybe that was too much to go. Guys, what do you think? Send out the email or the, the text yeah. message to the rest of the stuff. Nah, you know, it was a little much. Let's bring it down to 7,000. Okay, well, we still got some room, so should we throw some creatine in it? You know, so we kind of get to play around. And to be honest, we get to play mad scientist, and it's awesome. Um, we get to give this stuff to free to our customers as well as part of the trial process. Those that we trust and, you know, They'll of give course, you real feedback. yeah, they give us real feedback. And so it's great. So when they come back in and they see the product come to fruition like this and they see it on the shelves, they're like, Hey, was that that product that I tried three months ago? That, yeah. that blue coconut or that peach rings? And I'm like, yeah, you know, you were the one of the ones and you're the one that helped us formulate it. You're the one that, you know, gave us that feedback. Hey man, when you said that it hurt your stomach, we listened to you because it also hurt the stomach of a couple other guys, and so we had to pull this out or that out or add this back in. Um, so the second thing I would say is, uh, you know, supply. So we got formulations, uh, customers, and then right now, I mean, if you watch the news, you know there's a supply shortage on everything, right? Everything. And so, you know, some of these brands back here, they're nationally recognized brands. They're very popular. Well, shoot, if they get on back order, they're on back order for one month, two months, right? In addition – we have to absorb whatever cost that, you know, maybe they're not, maybe they don't have the best distribution 
uh, chain. Maybe they don't have the best logistics or the best contract with whoever their raw ingredient supplier is. And so we've partnered with a manufacturer, uh, GMP certified. And so what we do is we say, hey, what's your forecast looking like on creatine? All right, well, let's lock it in. Let's get X amount of units right now. And so what we can do is we can actually guarantee that supply, you know, within reason for and, and forecast for the next several months to our yeah. customers. Yeah. And so when everyone else is out of creatine, it's like, you guys, we got a, we got a ton of it. Again, frontlineformulations.com, southernnutrition.com. You guys are just coming to our stores. But, yeah, I mean, you walk around and because uh, we get the, the emails we, or we get the Facebook uh, messages. Hey, guys, do you even have creatine? I mean, so, something just as simple as that. So. It's great from um, not only customer service on that, customer retention, because if we always have the same pre-workout that they've grown to love, but also in forecasting, keeping the shelves filled and just being able to provide a bigger variety to everybody, right? So what, um, so with, here you go. So, you know, you have your customers and your employees test it out. Say they love something, right? Like right. they love gauntlet or um, pump Oh yeah. But then, you know, three months goes by and... You know, there's something in there that really wasn't in there. Like, what do you, I'm not saying that's happened, but like, say you find out like, man, like our supplier forgot to put something in there. What, um, what do you do as a business owner to like fix that? Hey, you know, let your people who may have bought it, but hey guys, we're going to give you this, this, uh, sorry. Like, how, I know that's probably not happened, but like, what would you do if something like that were to happen? Because you want to stay on top of these other brands who are putting stuff not the correct amount in there, right. not putting in there at all. Right. And so this actually happened with another brand's pre-workout. Um, and we started off by giving it to our employees, who, again, doing our kind of testing process. And that's kind of how we've been able to, to really nail down our own process because we would do it with other people's products. Some, we send it out to get third party tested. Yeah. Now we don't have the entire ingredient, but maybe it's the, you have the, you the main one. The main three, like yeah. Like the stuff. top three. Right. So we'll have it tested for, for that to see if it contains those first yeah. off. Um, but one time we started giving it to all our employees and our employees got sick. It was a pre-workout and they actually got sick first. So I'm like, Oh my God, I'm glad. <laughs> I mean, I sh- shout out CJ. I know you're all right now, but, <laughs> but you know, again, if we had shipped it to all of our stores before we had, we had gone through that due diligence yeah, period, yeah. Shit, we would have had, yeah. who knows how many people yeah. c- come back and be like, hey, man, I got that sick. But and they t- never come back again. Right? I mean, would you, if you're like, get jaundice and you get <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know, you'd throw it up. And, I mean, again, pe- people are very, again, if you've earned their trust in the past and you're transparent about what happened and you do your best and they see an honest effort, most people are pretty forgiving. You're going to have that dude who's just like, man, fuck you guys. I'm going here and. And on top of that, I'm going to trash you publicly. That's just a, you, you know, just got to deal with that. You just got to deal with that. We've been doing business because that guy's probably going to do that. To well, and no what, what, yeah, and when you go on his Google comes. reviews, you see he one star, da da da, yeah. one star a nail place, yeah. a restaurant, a subway. Uh, you know, uh, like negative, like, you know, it could be like with the new Batman coming out. I'm reading all these po- positive reviews. And then you have the one person like, this is terrible. It's why would they do three hours? Like, dude, come on. You probably give yeah. negative reviews every day. You're not yeah. going to make everybody happy. You know, it's just yeah. part of it, I'm, unfortunately. Yeah. And so um, the follow up, um, again, knock on wood, we haven't had that with ours I, and I you know I thank my employees my business partners my manufacturers and just our staff everyone that we involve in that process all the way from top to bottom on that but uh, for the rest of the products um, you hope that they're doing the, the right thing and sending out some sort of recall letter and if they haven't um, then we drop them yeah. you know so that that's the best that I can do and then I can either publicly state that or I can make phone calls and be like and this is hard and you're like all right, let's go and see who bought such and such and let's call them and at least let them know. And so we, we have had, yeah, we have had, and that's the right thing to do. And um, that's one of the things that I learned from, you know, medical device industry. There was a lot of stuff that would break and uh, we'd issue voluntary recalls, Mm -hmm. send out emails, lot numbers, and I would go go in and sequester the product, swap it out. So we follow a very similar, similar regimen. That's something I learned again, learn from the restaurant side, still do to this day. Like if something, if we messed, if we messed up, okay, Hey, we admit it. We messed up. We're going to figure out how to make it right. And people, like, that's, again, how you retain so much business because people, like, everybody makes mistakes. Mm-hmm. And they're like, man, but you called, and you, or, you you know, you're owning up. You're finding a way to make it right. Again, they're going to come back because it's – they're like, okay, you're human too. Yeah. You know, they, they can see that versus versus seeing it as a business. We're like, you know, it was Southern Nutrition. Instead, now they're associating with Paul. Well, and I think having the retail, right, because a couple of years ago, everyone's like, oh, retail's 
dead or this and you know COVID hit people want relationships they yes. want yeah, to see yes. they are they want that one on one they want that advice man I don't have 16 years or whatever it is to, to learn everything that you know I want to come yeah. to you and be like alright nuts and bolts I'm yeah, going to pay you do what, 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 do I do? what do I got to do same here everyone's mm-hmm. you know has their own focus in life other things are more important than you know doing all the research on the protein themselves now some guys they love it but most yeah. people they want to build a relationship <laughs> with someone they can trust yep. go from there about how, what was the, the average turnaround time from, like, idea and concept to, you know, this now being sitting on the shelf? Oh, man. Um, well, our first product was actually something called Fenta Burn, which was... Uh, I remember a, that. Yeah, which I, was... I, I remember that. Yeah, so it was a thermogenic, and I think, again, you were probably on the ground level, like, yeah. hey, Jake, what do you think? <laughs> you know, and I don't know if it was strong enough for Jake, because, you know, it's, I think it has, like, 125 milligrams of caffeine uh, Not per scoop. For Jake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough banned substances for Jake, so... No, I'm just kidding. So, um... You know, we took that and really, really what was the toughest part was um, the label, you know, coming up with a good looking label, didn't look like it was cheap, didn't look like it was made in our bathtub, yeah. didn't, that was the hardest process. Yeah. The formula, I, man, I got 30 or 40 guys that work with and around me that I can talk to about getting a kick-ass formula yeah. like that, but what is this going to look, like? look like? What's the branding What's the branding look like? Yeah. What size bottle? Do we have that size bottle? What size colored lid? Do we have that lid in stock? How many? What's your run time going to be? Um, or how many uh, you're going to make on your first run? All these little things that are silver and how everything you know, just fits together yeah. labels. I'll say labels, labels and, and supplement panels. Yeah. Cause to me, that's the thing that, um, earns the trust, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I want it to be cool, but I got to make sure the part that earns the trust yeah. is done right. Yeah. So you're looking at that and it's like, Oh shit, it was a 0.005 and not a 0.004. Hey, label maker, please redo this. Da, 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 da. And like, you could have the best formulation, best product, but like you said, if the branding mm. is shit, mm-hmm. like, no one's, no one's going to buy it. If it looks like it's it, bottom of the barrel, nobody's going to yeah, buy it. If yeah. it looks like it's from something from Walmart, nobody's going to yeah. buy it. Like it. It has to pop. Like mm-hmm. with, with the chrome and the shiny and the texture and, you know, everything exactly. It's like point dot, 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 dot yep. to the grams. Yeah. yeah. No. And so um, I would say that was the hardest part. And then um, recently over the past couple of years, it's been like, well, do you have the raw ingredients to make that product? Yeah. yeah. Right? And so that's kind of slowed us down. It's like, well – you know, if beta alanine isn't going to be around or say it's, uh, you know, $100 a kilo now, do we want to replace it? What are we going to do instead? Yeah. Like you make and, a new, you might have to make a whole new product without that. Right, yeah. right. A version 2.0. So that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're running into now. And uh, again, knock on wood, we've been able to absorb some of the cost, but we haven't had to start over from a, a formulations uh, yeah. Well, standpoint. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But I would say labeling, man, getting the label, getting your, your team, your label maker, all that is the hardest thing. Yeah. How, um, who, so who came up with the label? Did you have, did you hire a company or did you three sit down and just draw stuff out, send somebody, <laughs> send it back? Like, how did you actually, you know, come up with, you know, kind of, cause like you look, I'm looking at all your stuff. It's very similar, like labeling with the background and the different colors, but it's all very similar. How did y'all come up with that? All right. So, um, what I did is, uh, I sought the advice of one of the guys I went to college with. He actually helped with the five-star master logo at the time, and then also helped me create the Southern Nutrition logo. And so I went back to him and said, hey, man, we're trying to create a brand. What do you think, you know, have, have you done supplements before? What do you think we should do? How should we make this pop? And so there was a bunch of, oh, I'm about to you're lose good. it. You're good, you're okay. good. I got you, keep talking. Um, there was a bunch of back and forth with him, but basically taken, and shout out Jesse Hopkins, um, you know, he worked for the school newspaper at Chico State. And yeah. so it was just a, an old acquaintance, and I sought him out. I'm like, hey, man, this is what we're trying to do. And he's out in California. And so I've shipped him all of these uh, labels and everything. But, you know, we tried everything from, uh, what was it, 99 Design? So, you know, some of those, like, label art. Like, like Fiverr. Yeah, yeah, like some that. of that stuff overseas that uh, that you can do where, you know, you're paying, like, $30 for, like, a 1,000 designs or yeah. something like that. And a lot of it came back and it was just like, oh, oh, this is just, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're scrolling through. Fields and fields of stuff because they don't live here, you know. I, they're trying to make a living, and there's a place for that, uh, but not for the brand. So we did entertain that. We had a, our first Fenta Burn label was awful. Um, I can't remember who actually designed it, but I think it, you know there may have been some paper sketches l- along the way. But. <laughs> <laughs> but then a lot of times you don't realize until you see it on the shelf, like all grouped up. You're like, ooh. Yeah. It looked awesome when I was looking out on the screen. And yeah. Now I don't like it as much. Well, and, and, you know, back to the original question about the, you know, the hardest part being. So 
when these products sit on the shelf, right, you want to try and have the name fully visible. Yep. So if it only shows pump and then again and is off on the right-hand side, it's not centered. Yeah. So how these products sit on the shelf is actually very important. Yeah. So you got to take all that. And, well, you're not going to know that until after your first run. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I got to commit to 2,000 units or whatever it is for a first run, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. So some of that. So, uh, again, we fine-tuned it, but there was a lot of that early on, yeah, I think. You don't get it. We even look at, like, how is it going to be stocked so it's easy to shop, like where the handle goes. Right. The different ways it's going to be displayed. So, like, when they stack, how does that look? Does it, you know, it's, it's crazy how much marketing goes into the packaging. Right. You know. And, and yeah, when, functionality you, of the packaging. Yeah, and when you get it right, it like, it just pops. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I, think, I think Red Bull was the first one I remember that just – they nailed it. Yeah. Like, and that was nailed so it. important to them, like how it looked in every single store, you know, and it, I mean, just kudos to that brand. I mean, it exploded, what, 15, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's a, it's such a, it's still such a big brand, but I mean, and, and now you hear other people, or I do, and what I do for a living, I hear people, you know, we're, we want to kind of be the Red Bull of this. Right. We want to, we want to treat it like Red Bull did this, you know, I mean, it's the same thing. And you can see that you guys have paid attention to that, like how it's, how it's all front face, and then you've got it billboarded across. Yeah, you know, it, it makes a big difference. And it's not Thank too you. much going on on the label. Like you see some of the labels, mm-hmm. there's a thousand things going on, where you're looking at. All right, it's I can see it says Gauntlet, Pumpageddon. Uh, what else we got? Creatine Chaos. Like you know exactly, you know what you're getting by looking. Yeah, at, right? and then very clear what it is. Yeah, like you know. Well, that, hey, I appreciate that feedback. <laughs> no, thank you. Because, hey, you know, I'll admit there's always that discussion. Man, do you think we should snazz up this label and should we do? So I think we're going to come up with a more extreme pre-workout and we might make it black this time just to offset it. But we knew for our essentials, for everything that's out, we wanted something white. We wanted consistency. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uniformity is definitely important. For sure. All right. So you started the, uh, the retail probably – Six, seven years ago. Then you started 2015, uh, what was it? December 1st, 2015 yeah, so was when we years. opened this store. Yeah. And then the supplements about three years ago, I guess, right? Yeah, I, I want to say it's... Was it more? For, was it No, 20? no. I, I, I think Fentaburn, I think our first release of Fentaburn was somewhere around 2018 late or 2019, if I remember. The, this line's only two years old, so yeah. we've actually done really so good. Like, so like two years of that, mm-hmm. seven years of the retail. What's next? What is next on your? What is next in the supplement <sighs> retail shop in this genre? Do you or you just want to keep on growing the the, the, the supplement brand? The, I know you you slowly keep on opening more stores, but what is the next goal? Because it seems like every four years, like I, I know how your brain works. Like you want something else. Like you want to take what you did, build off of that, and build into something else. Right, right. Um, well, I'd say on on the supplement store side. I'm, I don't plan on opening any okay. more stores individually, myself. Yeah. Now, that being said, if there's somebody who wants it, who uh, you know is, is qualified, they're willing to move, hey, let's talk about some markets. Let's, yeah. email, so I, email you at. Yeah, email me at. Is that uh, just, Paul at southernnutrition.com. You like you're, you're stretched as thin as you can get and still give the, the coverage. And quality that you want to yeah. get. Yeah. Okay. And because remember, too, guys, like – not only is there, I, I kind of want to be able to keep my eye on everything or my hand in everything, but um, my whole philosophy during this whole time is bring on or hire people that are better than me. And I, I didn't make that up. I learned it from a surgeon out in California. Shout out Dr. Denon. But his whole philosophy was like build a team of surgeons that are better than him. And that's what I look at. I say, okay. And, you know, and I try and use it in my everyday hiring. But if I'm going to open another business and I'm going to put, again, not to sound super old, but I'm single dad and put my family's uh, financial stability out there. It's like, okay, who do I trust as much or more than me? What are yeah. they better at than me? Yeah. And I've worked hard. And so um, I don't want to discredit anybody out there, but you know, it takes a lot for me to say, hey, man, I, I trust you with that. No, and I think that's one thing that all small businesses need to uh, understand is you need to surround yourself with smarter people. Yeah. Um, you know, the, like, because it's only going to make you better. There's so many, and, and again, uh, for those watching out there, I would say that is the biggest piece of advice out there. Hire and bring on people that are better than you. Yeah. Because, uh, again, I'm getting older. There's going to be a day where I don't want to be in the stores yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just want to get a, some mailbox money or check yeah. or something, you know. But um, back to your original question, we still got some more products uh, with this. There's still definitely a need in the store. You know, we talked to our customers. There's still a need there. So I think you're going to see some bigger things with Frontline. I think we're already in 105 stores 
nationwide. Oh, so, so I was going to ask what outside of Southern Nutrition you guys are selling to. Yeah, so the Five Star awesome. Nutrition's, um, I think we just got uh, with Rocks Nutrition, they're a big chain, um, Supreme Nutrition, some other Total Nutrition's up north, All Star Nutrition's. Um, and I'm sure trying to find more places that are like, have the similar mindset to what we, you've got and the, the five star guys you started yeah, with. And, and talk yeah. about talk about that. Like you know, since now Frontline's in you know a hundred different stores, but they're in the smaller, you know, maybe one or two people own these stores. Yeah, talk right. about how the growth of the supplement industry and in those type of retail stores seems to be taking over, and the big chains like the GNC are going out and going into WalMarts now, the vitamin shops. Right. Like how the growth of these smaller stores. Or just, you know, it's rapidly growing. It seems like every month there's a new one popping up somewhere or a new website, but it's a small. It's not yeah. some giant corporation. Yeah, so I, say, I, I think you're seeing two things happen. I, I, I think you're seeing one of these phenomenon play out where, um, I don't call it mixed drinks, but, you know, they're, they're, they're these uh, smoothie bars, you know, and they're calling themselves nutrition stores. Maybe their focus is yeah. supplements or not. Yeah. But these kind of pre-made or ready-to-drink uh, stuff, maybe they offer uh, caffeine or maybe they or some protein or whatever. I, th- I think that niche is really blown up. Um, so those are popping up. Um, in addition, I think big box retail has finally looked at some of these products and saying, oh my gosh, I think there's some margin there. You know, why we're, we're getting people in to buy their gallon of milk. We're getting them in to buy this. Let's try this. Let's yeah. let's offer some protein. Now that being said, I know some of the product lines that they're carrying and they're not the best, you yeah. know, maybe it just fits their, their business model, their protein. And the margins are probably the lowest. And probably who's yeah. calling on them to, to get it in and can keep up with, you know, yeah. can you supply, you know, Walmart, Publix, you know, yeah. Dixie with, you know, enough. 6,000 units of whatever, blah, 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 weight concentrate. Yeah. You know, but, every every month, you know what I mean? Because the way they go through stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, that's that's got to play a factor, too, because you're still, you're still smaller on, on that end, too. Yeah, and so on our end, and I don't think that they have uh, the counsel that we have in terms of being able to identify quality. So they're they're going to carry those supplements, and I'll we'll call them B grade. I'll just call them what, what they are. You know, they don't go through. Now, some places have brought on some A list supplement yeah, manufacturers, but, we get what you're saying. but but for the for the most part. And so back to that kind of customer service model, that one on one model. I think. Although the internet has its place for, for supplements and everything, people, there's so much wrong with people's diets today. People want to figure out what's up with just them, like their body, right? Mm-hmm. And so they want that expert. And that's kind of the way we're going, whether it's people, um, you know, doing this YouTube stuff at home, um, doing podcasts, um, whether it's life coaches, everyone's kind of like, okay, I want to do something individual. I need to find out what is best for me. And you see it in the workplace. You know, it's not as popular to work for some of these big box retailers anymore, right? Everyone's kind of finding their niche. So I think um, as a country, we've kind of promoted, and uh, coronavirus probably fast forward that a little bit too, but people are now looking at things in a more individualistic approach from the things they spend their time on to the way they treat their body to everything, you know, their daily consumption of, of things. And so I, th- I think our approach fits with that model because people want that attention. Yeah. And speaking of attention, I think the last thing we should really hit on before we uh, end the podcast is, you know, go through when a new customer comes in exactly mm-hmm. what you do. Because, cause, I mean, you, you get their number, you get their email, you get their height, you get your, their weight, you get um, the scan. I mean, you do so many things that these other stores aren't doing. And I think that's one reason that makes it so personable for anyone to come in, mom, dad, bodybuilder, crossfitter, weightlifter, right. a teenager, a youth. Right. Kind of talk about when someone brand new comes in, like how personal your, your, your right. employees and you are. Well, and, and I think it goes back to the, the character piece that uh, I, I alluded to first, right? And the biggest component of that is uh, not only being open-minded, but being a good listener, right? I can teach everyone there is about supplements, but if they're standing there and uh, playing with a keyboard when a customer comes in and they're ignoring them, they're like, oh, just looking down or, you know, texting or whatever they're doing. So it starts with that process, right? So I'm very selective on who we bring in. They got to have good character. Hopefully they have good judgment. You know, of course I do my background and everything. Um, but I would say the sales process is more of a, of a, a open-minded, open-ended questions that really get us to know, like, well, why are you here? You came into our store essentially, yeah. right? I don't necessarily word it like that, but you know, what brings in came into a nutrition store, most likely looking for it. Well, (laughs) let's do that. Have you been in a place like this before? You know, some people think uh, that uh, I've had 
know, the guys next door come in looking for bottles of vodka. I've had people looking in thinking <laughs> this is like a testosterone clinic. You know, so someone says Southern Nutrition, you don't, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, we get everything in here. So it, it first starts uh, off by identifying that person, always with politeness and kindness. But yep. like, hey, man, like, and how's your day going? You know, how's the, how's the weather out? You know, I, again, I think everyone is so desperate right now to establish a connection. So whether you're talking about the weather, you're talking about their family, you're saying, hey, you know, have you ever been in a store like this before? I know it can be kind of overwhelming. We had a lot of stuff on the shelf, but let me show you around. You know, so just as simple as that and giving people – um, a strong look in the eye and just, uh, again, not necessarily stalking them, but giving them the attention and kind of being at uh, their beck and call when they do have a question. You know, from there, uh, we want to know, okay, so you're in here for this. Well, what have you tried before to get to that? You know, is this a lifelong goal of yours? Let's lose, uh, use losing weight, for instance. Uh, have you tried losing weight in the past? Okay, well, what have you taken? How did it work for you? You know, why, you know, are we in a rush? Is there a time frame? Like, what are we really trying to do? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to burn fat? Let's, let's dig a little bit. Yeah. And so I think that the conversation starts, starts very broad, but it gets down to, okay, let's try and identify what really, your, whether it's your life goal, your fitness goal, your health goal really is. And then after that, we can take some measurements. You know, we got a great body scanner technology over here. It's going to tell us how much water we have, how many calories you should burn, how much muscle you got. And then we'll interpret those results for you. Okay, you still need some more some more help? Well, what are you eating like? All right. Have you tried anything else? Are you on any diets, any fad diets? You know what I mean? And so we kind of walk them through all of that process, and then we get a chance to actually have some fun and taste some, uh, taste some supplements at the sample center. You know, sometimes people want to get jazzed, and we're trying two or three different pre-workouts, and they leave here on fire, you know what I mean? Sometimes they didn't have lunch, and it's like Costco. You know, they come in, and they get their one or two shots of protein, and um, – and so, but to wrap it all up, I would say the, the, the store culture, right? Um, again, I could have the best looking people in here, guy or girl, but if you're not paying attention to the customer, you're not attentive to them, you don't have a good moral code of ethics. If you're like, bro, this or bro, that to a, a soccer mom, like, come on, I don't care how much you know or how good looking you are. Yeah. You're, you, you know, it's just not good. Um, you know, so all of that. Cool. And I think uh, that's the biggest thing we can take away from the podcast today is culture. When it just with any business, with anything you're trying to promote, you're trying to build, like if you have a shitty culture, yeah. shitty work ethic, it's not going to work. You have to have a good work ethic. The culture has to be right. You have to just bust your ass to continue people, to grow. People. Yeah. And, and, and if you want to scale, guys, the human capital piece, I scaled too fast, and it, it was bad. It, it was bad. There was people that got let go. There was friendships that ended. You know, I, some, I made some poor decisions. And everyone's going to go through that. But, uh, you know, if you have a good mentor, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Listen to someone who has some wisdom and has maybe failed a few more times than you. And then yeah, you fo- learn way more from failures. Than you do from successes. Yeah, and then focus on the human capital piece. You're yep. only as good as, I, I hate to say your weakest link, but the, the guy yeah. on the front line. Most so. valuable resource is your people. Yeah, Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Right. Let's wrap it up there. Tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find the store, all your uh, links, Instagram, Facebook, okay. Twitter, TikTok, yeah. whatever you got. Woo. Put it all out there. All right. On our all right. So, uh, first off, I hope everyone enjoyed this, but you can email me directly, paul at southernnutrition.com. Uh, if you like the supplements and you want to carry them in your store, email info at frontlineformulations.com. Uh, everything has a Facebook page and a website. So if you're a consumer and you just want to try out a, a tub of gauntlet, you can go to frontlineformulations.com. If you see anything in the background you want to try, come into the store. Again, we have, was it, eight locations, two here in Mobile, one in Auburn, two in Columbus, Georgia, one in Dothan, Alabama, one in Claremont, Florida, one in Winter Garden, Florida, or you can go on southernnutrition.com. Um, Southern Nutrition Mobile is the local Instagram, but pretty much you could go into Instagram and type Southern Nutrition, <laughs> enter city, and then y- you'll be able to find us. Sweet. But yeah, big shout out to you guys, man. Thanks for doing no, this. This is cool. You, this is awesome. Yeah. It'll be yeah. good. And uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, download. Uh, we're finally on Apple Podcasts. It only took a year for Apple to <laughs> okay. finally approve it. Yeah, when you sent me that, I'm like, dude, we've been doing this for a year. And it's been like on Spotify and Podbean. But now we're finally on Apple Podcasts. So Download, like, subscribe, share, and uh, like I said, just... Yeah, where, th- where can they reach you? Because we're on Instagram Live here for you, too. All right, so on Instagram Live, you can reach me at amp underscore performance under- there any underscore questions? mobile, um, all that good stuff. Jake Johnson on Facebook. Is there any questions, Bacon? No, nope, just a bunch of folks waving. All right, perfect.
We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.